one adds up the benefits we gain from coral reefs as incubators of countless fish species, plus their ability to protect coastlines against battering waves and their draw for tourists, it's estimated that every square mile of reef is worth between $100,000 and $1 million a year. Hawaii's reefs alone generate $300 million a year, and Australia's Great Barrier Reef may be worth 30 times that. But despite their incredible value, the future of coral reefs is in serious jeopardy due to several human causes. The first stressor on coral comes from overfishing. Over a billion people get their greatest source of protein from seafood that spend part of their lives in coral reefs. The more we deplete these animals from this habitat, especially large ones like grouper and giant clams, the more we remove the ecosystem services those creatures contribute. Another factor in the decline of coral reefs is sediment runoff. As more and more forests and their deep root systems are destroyed in favor of farmland, rain is able to strip away the soil and smother the reefs in sediment. In addition, agricultural fertilizers get washed into the oceans, causing algal blooms that block sunlight from getting to the coral below. The most dramatic effect of a changing environment on the reefs is known as coral bleaching. Given a small rise in water temperature, sometimes as little as a single degree Celsius for just a week, the symbiotic dinoflagellates that paint the reefs abandon their hosts. Slowly, some reefs recover, but many reefs bleached during the 1997 El Nino event are still ghostly white. Last, and certainly not least, coral reefs and all other marine creatures that build a shell are threatened by ocean acidification. This is due to Le Chatelier's principle, which you all remember, right? Right? Okay, maybe not. Le Chatelier's principle states that the addition of an ingredient on one side of a chemical equation will tend to force the reaction to the other side in order to counteract the addition of that first ingredient. In this case, water, carbon dioxide, and carbonate ions are in equilibrium with bicarbonate ions. As the ocean absorbs the carbon dioxide we release, this reaction must proceed to the right. This drags water and carbonate ions along with it, but those are the very carbonate ions needed to build shells and coral. In short, the more carbon dioxide enters the ocean, the less calcium carbonate can be created as reefs and shells. Now, coral reefs have dealt with steady increases in water temperature and acidity before. Coral polyps can slowly migrate to cooler waters, and the process of laying down coral stone reduces the acidity of the water. But we're simply warming and acidifying the oceans far too quickly for the coral to handle. Estimates vary as to the exact amount of time they have left, but none of them are good. Buy a plane ticket, buy carbon offsets for that plane ticket, grab a snorkel, and enjoy our coral reefs while you still can. Your grandkids will be jealous.